Hey everybody, welcome to our bi-weekly live Q&A with everyone's uh, main man Thomas here, here to answer your, your Q's and give you A's. And I'm here for moral support for this guy. And not just moral support, but uh, I see right away we have uh, Justin, one of our uh, bi-weekly viewers. Justin's got my back! Tacos for Thomas. Now listen, again, I don't have tacos for Thomas. It's a very difficult thing to do. When we have, when we're shooting right before this, next time we won't do any shooting before this, and that will give my wife and I time to prepare tacos. So hopefully next time. But I do have something as a peace offering, not just to you, but to Justin uh, and to anyone else who's hoping for tacos for Thomas. We have muffins for my main man here. Yay! Muffins, as you said, from muffins from Mama. Yes, because my wife's a mama and she made she these made this morning. They're fresh. Uh, so it's a peace offering for now. Just kind of say, hey, listen, sorry about the no tacos situation. Awesome work on the reusable silicone. Well, yeah, uh, she really things. likes them. Uh, I know she's a little self-conscious about these. She's worried they're not fully cooked. So we'll see. Uh, but anyway, hopefully that They uh, look amazing. Suffice. They've got nuts. Is that chocolate too? It's chocolate in and there. And strawberry. Yeah, a little bit of arsenic. Uh, I mean, nothing. <laughs> I didn't say that. Mm. Pretty good. Good job. No, I'm kidding. They're they're really good, actually. Yeah. Mm, that's good. I love having snacks for this. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm sorry I didn't bring enough for the whole class. I'm so sorry about that. Hopefully, you're eating muffins at home while watching this. We are here again to answer all of your questions, as I mentioned. Um, for those of you new to the streams, we uh, we go in sequence um, for when questions are, are asked. We'll just keep going down the list. Yep. Uh, and we'll get to as many as we possibly can in the next hour. Uh, so with all that said, um, how are you doing today? You ready? You're I'm feeling pumped. In the zone? I'm in the zone! We, we just, we just yeah. filmed like three uh, new React videos. So we are pretty yeah. much primed and ready that to go here. That last one had me going. Holy oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That last one's a doozy! Yeah, definitely. Uh, whew, so we are ready to go. We're happy to be here. We're happy all you guys are here joining us today. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. We have a, a ton of questions already coming in. <laughs> Did Justin give you a ton of skulls? A ton of skulls. I think, is that good? No, probably not. Skulls are rarely a good thing. Maybe I mean, he's like, rock on! Yeah, yeah, maybe metal. Those muffins are metal. Or maybe he he's making a comment of my like fake. Oh, we yeah, that too. Death to the arsenic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, well, with that said, let's just jump right into some questions. Let's do this. Uh, we have some already lined up here. Sweet. Uh, what heaters are you going to use for the new Mega Build? Why would you ask me that? I have an episode coming out specifically on that. What do you think I'm going to use? What well, like really? What do you think I'm going to use? I want to know what you think. How about that? And then you can just wait for the episode. It's not that far away. I received the heaters today. So you'll see it real soon. Nice try trying to get that fat informations <laughs> ahead of time. <laughs> you sneaky devil. Uh, next up, uh, hey Thomas, love the videos. Just, Thank you. Just a quick question. Sure. How do you go about fixing the top frame on a 72 bow front, bow tank? Poop, you buy a new frame. That is literally the only safe way to do it. You have to get a new frame, take the entire plastic frame off and then replace it with a new frame. Um, it can be a little bit tricky, uh, especially because they're siliconed on and silicone doesn't like to let go. And they're usually on there in such a way that uh, the only way to safely get them off is to actually cut the plastic first um, and then try to peel it essentially off of the tank. It's not a fun process, but it can be done. And I'm sorry you have a broken trim. It could be a vivarium, and you could put dart frogs in it. Ooh, he likes dart frogs. I'm a massive dart frog guy. I love dart. You used to have them in the office, like right now, like our desks were right next to each other. I literally other and... was breeding them in the office yeah. just for fun. Yeah, and you'd keep like the uh, their food up in like jars up on between our desks, yeah. and every now and then I'd be like working editing, and a little fly would go zzz, yeah. buzzing by. <laughs> I was uh, the ones I had at the office. Oh, I had a few different types. I had some erratus at the office, um, but my favorite ones that I had at the office that were breeding for me, the erratus bred too, were um, some. They're not called sirensis, green sirensis, but they were uh, back in the day called green lamassi. I'm going to do darts again soon. But we digress. I have to. We digress. Yes! Uh, okay, uh, next up, uh, Justin actually has a question, not just mm. a demand, a question this time. That is incredible. Uh, refreshing. I have an actually, uh, he says I have an actual question. I purchased a glass thermometer for my tank. Okay. Uh, yesterday I saw it was broken and Yikes. whatever and whatever they have inside leaked into my tank. Will my fish be okay? I did a complete water change, but my two silver gars are still really sketched out and jumping all over the tank. I'm scared they're going to break 
their nose darting into the tank wall. Yikes. Have you heard of that problem happen to before? Bah, yeah, I've heard of people breaking thermometers, but not the part that holds the indication liquid. Right, yeah. Just the, the like little part at the bottom that has the little lead balls in it, which shouldn't be a massive deal. People use lead weights in aquariums all the time to hold plants down. But, um, yeah. Okay, so it, my concern would be heavy metals more than anything else, because obviously they shouldn't be using mercury anymore. So there shouldn't be you mercury in the, Yeah, there shouldn't be mercury in the water. It's usually just, the liquid is a, like a dyed red liquid of some sort. But um, I am going to suggest maybe trying a product to pull out anything that could possibly be in the water. There's a few different products out there on the market. Uh, one that I've had some really great success with is uh, Metazorb by Two Little Fishes. I think it's called Metazorb. Um, it's a white pouch and uh, there's a marble in it to keep it weighted down in, in either in the tank or in the filter or wherever you decide to put it. And the material the pouch is made of absorbs heavy metals and metal like crazy and very quickly. Um, and it'll actually, depending on the amount that's in the water, it'll change color and it'll tell you what metal it was that it was absorbing. So I would grab that, throw that in, as well as just a sweet butt ton of carbon, uh, like twice the amount you would typically use for that size tank. And hopefully in doing that, along with any other water changes that you want to do as an emergency, like if your guards are showing extreme stress, do a water change as well. But that will hopefully pull out anything else that might be in the aquarium. Man, that's a poopy situation. Sorry you're going through that. But yeah, I would try Metazorb, a butt ton of carbon, water changes, and uh, hopefully your guards settle down. Man. Yeah, that's rough. Sorry to hear that. Um, sorry, man. Uh, next up, uh, we have a question. A new, uh, f oh, okay, new 40B build with pre-cycled filter. I don't 40, know. 40 gallon breeder. There we go. You know the lingo. Yep. I'm glad I have you here. New of uh, 40, 40 breeder build uh, with a pre-cycled filter. Cool. Two epistogramma cacatuodulas. The pistols is fine. I get it. Nailed that one. I nailed <laughs> Male it. Male and female. Male nice. and female. Cardinal Tenter School, Cory School, Auto School. What order would you introduce to a newly planted system? Also, general care guidelines for that species that I mentioned that I nailed the name on. Cory School, Auto School. I would put the autos in close to last, and I'd probably put the epistogrammas in close to last. Um, if this was me, once the tank is cycled, I would probably go tetras. Corey's or Corey's Tetras doesn't really matter. Um, then Epistos, then maybe Autos. Cycle the tank first, and then that's that's the way I would do it, personally. Okay, cool. Uh, next up, can you somehow treat dead coral if you find it on the beach so that it's safe to put in your tank as decor? You should. Um, the issue with a lot of dead corals, it's extremely porous. So if you've never seen coral skeleton under a microscope, it is like a lattice of calcium structures. And um, the reason that's an issue is because it is very, very good at trapping organic material and it's very good at uh, releasing it again once it gets wet. So um, I would have concern that even with cleaning it as best you can, you're still going to end up uh, releasing a bunch of unknown nutrient into the tank, which could cause an issue. That said, um, what I've done in the past to uh, make corals safe for aquarium use is uh, bleach them. Here's the thing. Uh, when you bleach corals, it does deteriorate the skeleton a little bit. Not a lot, um, but it should break down any of the organics that are in there. Once you've bleached it, you have to soak them at least a couple of times. I rinse the bejesus out of them. I soak them a whole bunch. And then I use uh, one last final soak in lukewarm water and a ton of Seachem Prime to neutralize any potential chlorine bleach that is left. Because you do not want... Uh, something that smells like bleach to go into the tank. So you just have to keep rinsing and rinsing and treating until it no longer smells like bleach. Sometimes that almost like I've had pieces that never stopped smelling like bleach and I just never used them. But I'll also note that I've only ever done this with corals that have like 
perished at the store or from other hobbyists and I've just bleached the skeleton that was left so I could at least make something of it. I actually have a massive collection of coral skeletons from like shipments that arrived that weren't great and so on and so forth. It's sad, but over the last 13, 14 years, I've collected a ton of them. And I just have like a display case that I haven't set up yet. I was going to say, no, why have I not seen these? I know, these? it's because I haven't set up. But I have a display case that I literally fill with coral skeletons. Sounds cool. Yeah. Neat way to recycle. So if you don't use it in your tanks, just hold on to it for fun. Decor around the tank even. It doesn't have to go inside. Cool. Uh, we have a super chat from Mark's Aquatic. Whoa! Thank uh, just, you, Mark. Yeah, just for all of you joining us who may not know, uh, we do or uh, answer these questions in sequence. But if you do super chat us, uh, it's an awesome way to support us. And we really, really appreciate it. So we do bump those ones to the top of the list when you super chat. So Mark's Aquatic, thank you so much. Uh, he asks, what's the ideal tank size and tank mate for a flower horn? I don't like sticking flower horns with anything else personally. Um, they're very aggressive fish. And I find anything you mix them with, it's a risk. And I don't like risks. Unnecessary risks are unnecessary. Uh, that said, I've kept flower horns with other flower horns. I've had a male-female pair that did okay together for quite a while. I've bred a bunch of times. I've seen flower horn pairs get like mad at each other and end that relationship. And that's never a good thing uh, because somebody always gets very, very hurt. Uh, that said, full-grown flower horn, I think my ideal, like if I was picking my ideal tank as a minimum would be about 120 gallons uh, in a 48 inch by 24 inch by 24 inch format. I think that's a great size for an adult flower horn as a minimum. Um, I'm sure people will tell you you could probably go less than that, but 90 gallons, but I like the 120. It just gives a little bit more front to back, a little bit more space, a little bit more water volume, a little bit more dilution. You can feed them and not worry so much about um, them fouling the water very, very quickly. Obviously you wanna use heavy filtration as well. But yeah, I, I'm not gonna give you a tank mate because I don't like mixing them with other fish, but that's just me. Right, but, Sorry! But still, thank you so much for uh, the question. We appreciate it. Yeah! Next up, a question from a long time sub. Uh, Mave from Sweden. Hey! We finally got around to reacting to your uh, your submission, by the way, this yes. morning. So the that'll be out. React? Is yeah. it the next one? Uh, the next one or, or the one after the that. One after what that. are, what yeah. are the other? Cu upcoming. Very soon. So just so you know. Um, so she asks, uh, I have an Eheim 2275 Professional 4 Plus 600 nice. canister filter, and it's making a buzzing sound. Something oh. like a buzzing sound. I cleaned it about two weeks ago, and before that it was quiet. Uh, there's no air in the filter either. So she cleaned it. When she got it back in, it's buzzing. When you um, when you cleaned it, did you take apart the <clears throat> impeller as well? Like, So underneath the motor head, there's a cap where the impeller sits. So you'd have to remove that uh, cap that holds the impeller in place. Then there's a shaft and the impeller itself that you can take out of the actual impeller well, take it apart, clean everything up, um, take the uh, a brush or a paper towel on your finger or whatever you can get and clean the inside of the well. Make sure there's nothing in there. Sometimes it sucks up a piece of gravel or a piece of sand. She says, yes, I did. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure what's causing it. I would, um, ooh, what would I do? Is it rattling or buzzing? She said buzzing, like a buzzing sound. Hmm. I wonder, wonder, wonder. I don't know, reach out to our support. We actually have a, a wicked Eheim tech that works uh, at our warehouse and he's fantastic. His name is Kevin. And he's awesome. Yeah, I'm actually like, I've, I've got the exact same filter as you on the um, Mega Build 2.0. Uh, I've got a pair of them. Um, so I'm going to be going through some like maintenance tips and tricks and taking them apart and showing people exactly how you clean them like down to the best possible um, cleanliness you could get that filter i'm a wordsmith today <laughs> but uh uh so hopefully that'll help when those come out but really like anytime you're getting noise in the filter it's usually at the it's a fault of the impeller or something in that area and the reason you you would know that is because there's only one moving part in the filter and the moving part is the impeller nothing else should be moving um so if the impeller is making noise uh you'd want to just revisit that impeller and the shaft and even taking the impeller off of the shaft if you didn't do that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's that's the only spot that they can really make noise, like in the terms of mechanical noise, like buzzing or rattling or anything like that, because nothing else on the canister is moving. So yeah, revisit yeah. that and uh, reach out to Kevin and we'll, we'll help you figure it out. Yeah, sure. yeah, I've linked the, uh, the um, email address for you to reach out to. 
uh, message that you want to you want to uh, have Kevin take a look at it, send photos or a video, or I don't know, some kind of stuff to help him. Maybe like a video of the actual buzzing sound, uh, like the sound is making. I don't know, maybe that would help, uh, and hopefully he can help you with that. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, next up, uh, I have I have these snails the size of a grain of sand that keep showing up in my tank. They don't cause problems, but where do they come from? The tank is salt water, by the way. Size of a great oh, um, I don't remember what they're called. They're super, 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 super common. They kind of look like, and people often mix them up with baby like turbo snails or trochus snails. Um, but they don't grow very big, they stay super, super, super small. Very, very common. They're not going to hurt anything. They are just uh, algivores like most other snails. Welcome to salt water. You're going to find all kinds of weird stuff in your tank. Some of it's good, some of it's bad, some of it is neutral. Uh, the one you just brought up is kind of on the good side, also on the neutral side, doesn't really matter. Hey. Some of the other things you're probably gonna find uh, in due time are Asterina starfish. They are very, very small, and they have multiple arms. Sometimes they have three arms, sometimes two. I've seen even ones that were basically just one arm, and I've seen as many as six arms. They they uh, breed through, not breed, but they multiply through divisions. So they just drop arms off and clone themselves <laughs> all over the place. Um, you're gonna find spiorbid, uh, spiorbid. I'm tripping over my tongue today. Spiorbid snails, nailed it. Which are basically stuck to the rock, and they are like a little curly cue that sticks off, and then stuff comes out, and they live in that tube. Uh, you're gonna find feather dusters. You're gonna find sponges. You're gonna find all kinds of weird stuff. Mice, shrimp, uh, copepods, amphipods, hydroids, hydro jellyfish. Uh, hopefully not, but Aptasia, Mijano, and Emonies. That's the hobby. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, I currently have, I currently have a twenty-gallon tall tank with two turquoise rainbows, Ooh. a dwarf gourami, Ooh. five white skirt tetras, a sword tail, a bristlenose pleco, and three ghost shrimp. Can I fit a no? Of neon? No, you can't fit anything else in that tank. In fact. You should take those turquoise rainbows out because 20 gallons is not nearly <laughs> enough space. What are you doing? Oh, you're doing what everybody does. Everybody wants to put like all of the fish, all of the fish in the one tank. Um, you're you're gonna end up, you're already pretty well stocked, but I wouldn't add anything else. And there's, those turquoise rainbows are gonna get way too big for that tank. So um, I would revisit either getting a larger aquarium, probably based on what you wanna put in, I would say you're looking at a minimum of about 40 gallons. Uh, I, an optimal size tank without going huge would be 55. Uh, rainbows need space. Uh, they get a pretty big size, like pretty decent turquoise rainbows can get pretty big. Um, you need to upgrade or you need to get rid of those rainbows. I'm I like, I'm in a mood today. <laughs> I'm like really spastic. So uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know who, like, you could have just been pointed in the wrong direction. I'm not pointing fingers or blaming or anything. I'm just giving you the practical advice that you're probably going to get from other places if you did more research and, uh, yeah. So anyways. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was... Pretty, Sorry, I don't have better news for I think you. that was pretty clear. Yeah, so get rid of the rainbows and then you can uh, maybe introduce uh, a small school of whatever it was that I didn't let Brian finish saying. Neons, <laughs> probably? Uh, yeah, it was, um, yeah, neons. Yeah, look at that! Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, just just not a question, but Joanne from Kitchener, Ontario says, hi, uh, camping right now. I love your channel. Thanks for the video. You <laughs> are awesome! Go camp! Put your phone away! What is going we have, on we have, here? We have someone watching from camping. We had one of our guys watching from his honeymoon in Mexico. Oh my from the god! Pool. I'm not worth it's, it! It's flattering. Go and enjoy awesome. the outdoors. No, you know what? I, I say double down. <laughs> Start watching the rest of our videos. Don't don't go camping. Yeah. Oh, oh uh, no, just take take the phone out on the canoe. Yeah. <laughs> Watch. Yeah, just put it on the other side. Give me a couple of oars. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Uh, well, hey, listen, flattering thing. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, hi, guys. Hi. Uh, can you take white worms found in a mature aquarium and culture them? I love to use them as a treat for my frying guppies. I'm sure you can. I have no idea how. But yeah, it's, it should be possible. Yeah, yeah. If they're, they're probably some kind of detrivore or, yeah, I don't know. I don't even want to, like, assume. Um, this You're the second person to bring up white worms. I'm, wi I'm writing this down. I'll, I'll do some research and maybe I'll we'll do a video on culturing something like that. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of things you can culture. We should definitely do a vi video on culturing uh, live foods for your fish. White worms. One of the on the list. The foods that um, I have cultured for fish 
Um, there's three things out of culture that you could technically feed fish that depend on size. Uh, flightless fruit flies, very easy to culture, a lot of fun. Uh, some people find them gross because they're fruit flies, but fruit flies are not gross. They are just fruit flies. Um, they're clean little critters. You're not going to get sick from them or anything. So uh, fruit flies is a, a great treat for a lot of fish. They're very small. Um, Springtails, again, very small, can be a great treat for fish. They like to float on the surface of the water, so they are best for surface feeders. Same goes for fruit flies. And then uh, another one for um, larger fish or fish with stronger jaws or bigger mouths, um, you could also culture, uh, what are they called? Potato bugs, some people call them. Um, roly polies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Oh, why am I having such a hard time? Amphipods? No. They are, what are they? They are the ones from the deep sea. I'm just. Oh, uh, yes, I I can't remember either. I, I don't know why I'm time. having a hard time remembering. I'm, but I'll get back to you on that. It'll pop into my head in the next like five minutes. Yeah. But uh, anyways, a friend of mine cultures them and sells cultures and stuff. And uh, they're awesome. They're a lot of fun. They're great. While Joanne was watching us at camping, someone says, I'm at my grandma's. <laughs> say hi to grandma for me. Go spend time with your grandma. After the stream, go or to just grandma. maybe say grandma hi. wants to watch with yeah, you. Yeah, you know what? Say, hey, Grams, check out this. Uh, these two guys are talking about fish. You want to watch? Look at this goofy guy. Maybe it's a good way she'll want to bond with you, uh, and no better way to bond than watching us and asking questions. Yeah, we're uh, wholesome ish. Ish, yeah. Uh, when the cameras are rolling, we're pretty wholesome. Uh, okay, next up, we have another super chat from Key Cam. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, how do you prevent brown algae on decor in the tank? Brown algae is. Um, Sometimes it's diatom, algae. There's a few different things. Uh, nutrient control and light control. So if you have your light on too long during the day or the light is too bright for the aquarium and you don't have live plants and other things that can uptake nutrients through photosynthesis and you don't really need a, a light that bright, that could be one reason. Um, but nutrient, uh, the amount of nutrients in the water often has something to do with it. So I would look at um, silicates. Uh, you may or may not find a test kit for silicates uh, locally. Uh, phosphates um, and nitrate. So have a look at where your levels are at. It may just be a matter of doing some more water changes and some physical maintenance to get rid of it, and then it'll stay away for you. Yeah. Cool. I don't know if we have a silica test kit. They're not that common. Not a lot of people test silicates. And salt water mostly. Anyways. Anyway. All right. Uh, hi, Thomas. Hey. Uh, I noticed last week that my aquarium was leaking. Ah! I have everything moved into a new aquarium now, but I don't know Ooh. what to do with the old leaky one. Any tips? Yes, you can reseal it from the inside. Uh, aquarium safe silicone is not hard to come by. We sell uh, quite a few different types. Um, you take a razor blade, flat razor, and you can scrape out the silicone from the inside of the tank. You don't have to peel the panels apart or anything. And then there's lots of videos on YouTube that show you how to reseal aquariums. And then you just reseal it with the silicone and it could be an ugly job. It could be a not so ugly job, depending on where it's leaking. If it's like leaking closer to the top of the tank, then you could just repurpose that tank as a uh, vivarium for plants. Maybe you just want to keep some like high humidity plants like orchids or something like that in your home. Um, you can just, you know, put the whatever dirt you're going to keep in the bottom of it and then plant it and just it'll be like a, a vivarium. Or you could turn it into a reptile, a reptile tank where you have to have no moisture in the tank at all. So an arid species uh, that doesn't really care so much about moisture. And that's another purpose you could have for the tank. So reseal, vivarium, uh, arid terrarium. Sweet. Uh, next up, oh, uh, uh, Jack says, my grandma says you're cool. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Grams. <laughs> ah, grandmas are always so sweet. We're timeless. Yes, we are indeed. Tell her to subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, next <laughs> no, up. seriously. Tell her to subscribe. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, my planted aquarium has fertilizer planted soil, a full spectrum light, and my plants aren't looking very good lately. Aww. What should I add to make them look better? That is so vague. <laughs> You're not giving me a lot to work with here. Um, usually people are, have trouble with plants when they pick plants that are, they have a low tech tank and they've picked plants with higher demands uh, and they're not meeting those demands. Uh, another reason is that 
um, you've got high light and no injected CO2 and have no way to bring uh, CO2 into the tank currently. So that is a recipe for algae and plants to just generally not do well. Um, not having enough nutrient in the tank, you can get different ailments, on uh, leaf ailments like yellowing or brown spots or anything like that uh, based on nutrient deficiency. So if everything's going good, but your leaves keep getting these yellow holes, then that could be the issue. I don't know what your problem is exactly because it's uh, you were very vague, but um, I would start looking at making sure you have the big three in check. So number one, light, number two, uh, nutrients, number three, CO2. That is not in order of importance. Those are just the three things. So if you're gonna have high light, you also have to have high nutrients and high CO2. If you have medium light, medium nutrients, medium CO2, so on and so forth. They have to be in balance. Um, otherwise, algae will outcompete your plants and in general, your plants aren't gonna thrive. If you're having plants that are melting back, that can sometimes be because the plants at the store, they get plants from like Tropica, let's say, and Tropica grows many of their plants immersed, so not underwater. When you transfer them to underwater, if you don't have injected CO2 or a high rate of CO2 for them, uh, there's some die off because they're, they're not photosynthesizing like they did on land. And um, sometimes plants even have different growth forms underwater. So it's a different leaf that they start growing when they're underwater versus on land. The leaf could look a little bit different. It's gonna function a little bit different. It's gonna be able to deal with the aquatic environment. I could go on because again, you were vague, but hopefully that kind of steers you in the right direction. That's it. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, guys, remember to hit that like button. If you haven't already, that would help us out big time. We really appreciate that as well. Uh, next question uh, is, hey guys, love your shows. Thank you. Uh, my question is, I have a 55 gallon with uh, 15 uh, Demisoni cichlids. Demisoni? That's the one. Uh, and uh, one male, 14 females. Temperature is 80 degrees. pH is 8.2. I find they're skittish. Uh, is this normal with this breed of beautiful fish? Can be, especially at first. Uh, but fish are all different. So, like, you could get, you know, you could get a group of, I don't know, epistogrammas. They are shy by nature, right? But once you've had them in the tank for a while, they just get used to what's going on and you're gonna see them more and more often. This is the same thing with uh, some species of schooling fish, like tetras can be like that at, at times. Um, galaxy reservoirs are almost always like that. Uh, so it could just be a matter of they will eventually come around. Some things that impact that, if you have the tank in a low traffic area of your home, and there isn't usually anybody around the tank, they will freak out whenever somebody walks in the room because they're not used to the traffic. Um, if there's always people going back and forth, there's always traffic in the room, things are always happening, uh, they may be very, very shy at first because they are startled by this constant traffic, but what happens is over time, their hunger gets the best of them, you feed the tank, they come out and eat even though there, there are people around and there's traffic going by. Um, and they just get used to the fact that this traffic is not a danger. Uh, animals, this could be cats, it could be dogs, it could be ducks, it could be chickens, I know. Um, sometimes it just takes a little while for these animals to warm up to the idea that these things around them that they're not used to seeing that could be in their minds potential threats uh, are not potential threats. They'll eventually realize there's nothing wrong. Like my ducks for uh, an example, I know they're not fish, but it's the same idea for the longest time wanted nothing to do with me. Would They would run away if I got anywhere close to them. They'd pile into the corner of the stall if I came in to give them food and stuff. Now they, they see me, they don't do that. They don't run away. They're still standoffish, but at least they're not freaking out. Same thing with fish, same thing with many other animals. Just give them some time to get used to the traffic and you'll probably see more of them. There are species like knife fish and such that spend so much of their time hiding during the day um, or hiding during the night, depending if the, on uh, the fish is diurnal or nocturnal, that you're just not gonna see a lot of them anyways. Some pleco species can be like this, uh, but the, the fish you have, you should see a lot more of as time goes on. Cool. Uh, take a quick second ah! to mention something. Ah! Uh, we are now just past uh, 90,000 subscribers. Holy Jeez. Yeah, so thank you guys uh, for all your support getting us to this point. Uh, we are really itching to get to that 100k uh, mark. And yes. as I'm sure a lot of you know, when we get there, we are going to be doing a pretty crazy giveaway. What are like some of the most exciting things we're giving away? Uh, 
Okay, so one of the biggest things we're giving away, which is absolutely crazy, is I think it's a 50, it's either 52 or 53 gallon cylindrical acrylic aquarium that comes with the cabinet, it comes with the uh, canopy, and it comes with sump filtration, and it's already got an overflow and everything built. That's coming in from uh, my really, really good friends at ProClear Aquatics. It's an incredible tank. It's going to be a lot of fun for whoever gets it. Um, it's also a very expensive tank, so it's a really <laughs> cool prize. Uh, we're also going to have one of their brand new Redline sumps available for somebody to win. We've got a light fixture um, and pumps from Akamai, which are incredible as well. Yeah. We've got prize packs from uh, Polyp Labs. If you're into reptiles, we have an incredible amount of uh, prizes to give away from uh, RepCal. Uh, we've got prizes from Mist King, amazing misting system. Yeah, yeah. I was just talking about dart frogs not long ago the only misting system i use it is incredible uh we've got we've got so much stuff i can't even remember everything like big out like uh, we've got big out gift, gift cards. cards so you can just go and spend on whatever you want yeah uh, yeah a ton of stuff um, we're gonna have a video come out soon on the whole thing and we'll go through the whole gamut of craziness that you can yeah do. it's gonna be uh, really really cool uh tons of ways to enter you can get like multiple entries into this thing it's gonna be a really exciting thing so we want you guys to apis on board apis on board we want you to be aware of it and uh you know spread the word because the sooner we get to 100,000 subscribers the sooner we're gonna be able to uh offload all this stuff i can't wait yeah it's, it's gonna be fun. i'm excited and we're gonna do i think a, a live stream with some of yeah. our announcements and whatnot so yeah, you're gonna yeah, want to yeah. check that out for sure so anything you can do to uh, get word out on, on our channel and get a, the, uh, us up to 100K subscribers will mean we give away a whole bunch of stuff even sooner. So we really appreciate that. I'm so excited. I, know, I can't believe too. how far we've come. Yeah, awesome. no, it's pretty crazy. And uh, yeah, we thank you guys for all I never would have thought. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, we have released a new video uh, this week, a uh, high-tech plant tank. Um, Planting. Planting. Dry start method. Dry start method. Yeah, so we, we've got that. So check that out after this as well. React video is coming up next week. So we got tons of cool stuff coming up. Uh, so, uh, again, let everyone know of all the cool stuff. Uh, we wanted to let you guys know we have something pretty cool coming up. Uh, it's not today. Uh, it actually starts uh, July 4th for Independence Day. Uh, but uh, there is going to be uh, an Independence Day uh, sale at BigLspets.com. Uh, that's one great way to support us as well. You guys support us in a ton of ways, and we appreciate every one of them. Yep. Another way is to visit BigLspets.com, uh, and if you do need aquarium supplies, it's a good place to pick them up. There's going to be a 15% a, a site-wide sale uh, starting July 4th to, to July 7th, and the really cool part is that uh, one one person who you know picks something up from uh, BigLspets.com in that period, uh, they're going to be... Uh, there's going to be a random draw and someone's going to win a free current USA uh, Orbit Marine Pro LED light. What? Yeah, the 18 to 24 inch uh, and, a, and the tank mount. Uh, so uh, if you do shop with, with Big Owls uh, from July 4th to, to July 7th for that 15% site-wide sale, uh, one lucky shopper will be drawn. This uh, is ridiculous. Yeah, it's going to be... I can't win this stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't. But, but you know what? Well, you could you just shop in the whole... You never know. Create an account. They don't know it's you. you that would be it. so shysty. And then be like, hey, guys, <laughs> look what I won. You can show it everyone. It was me. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, so just, that's a great prize. Guys. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool little thing. So uh, totally random. If you if you happen to pick something up, you'll get entered into the draw for this uh, for this current USA Orbit Marine Pro LED. So just thought I'd mention that so you guys are aware of that. Uh, but with all that stuff uh, said, let's jump back into our Q and A's. We have a, a super chat from Fat Rabbit who uh, is uh, a frequent uh, yeah. viewer here uh, of our Q and A's. Says, uh, "What's up, boys? Happy Canada Day!" Oh, we're just Day. hanging, eh? Yeah, having a good time. Happy Canada Day, he says. Uh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna. It's a, it's a long weekend here. It is. Uh, so uh, once this is done, I'm gonna try not to do much work the rest of the weekend. I'm gonna crack open a couple cans of delicious, delicious beverages and, and just have a good time I, I, in the backyard. I stocked up on the beverages as well. Yeah, so it's... I'm know, not going anywhere special, just hanging out with the family, playing with the kids, spending some time. Yeah. Having some fun. Did you get some, some fireworks? And you're, you gotta, we might, you actually. Can, we were, you can have a good fireworks show in your area. Yeah, yeah, we could. No, I think we're actually... Um, there's a small town uh, near where we live called Shumanakity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they're going to have a fireworks display, so we're going to take the kiddos down there. Nice. I don't think they've seen fireworks yet, really. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be a little rainy, a little gloomy, yeah, but whatever. still, we're going to enjoy it. Uh, so, yes, thank you so much. Happy we're in Atlantic Canada. What do you want? Yeah, yeah it happens. <laughs> Happy Canada Day to you and to all the other Canadians out there, and even uh, those who aren't Canadians but want to celebrate Canada. Happy Canada Day. To Yay! All of you. Really appreciate that. Okay, so back into the aquatics questions, my friends. 
Okay. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, did I ask this one already? I think I did ask this one. Okay, next up. Uh, good morning, guys, from Toronto. Hey! Hello. Uh, I have a 90-gallon tank with a 110 hang-on-the-back filter okay. and an airstone and Ziss filters. The tank is currently stocked with 20 fish. Do I have enough filtration? I have no idea because I don't know what 20 fish you have that tank stocked with. What if you've stocked that tank with 20 arowanas? 20 Oscars, 20 arowanas, 20, who knows? 20 sharks. I don't know. Um, it's a decent amount of filtration. Uh, I personally, when I go with tanks that big, almost exclusively use canister filters. They just hold a ton more media. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what a Zis filter is, if that's a brand, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. But uh, you could have enough filtration, depending on what 20 fish you have in there. You might not. I wish I could. I need you to be more specific, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Let us know. I'll, we'll follow get, up. Yeah, yeah. Follow up. We'll follow up. Uh, Hi guys, not a fish question, but have you ever been scuba diving? I've not. I have. Uh, okay, so I was actually I've been snorkeling, not scuba diving. I got a really embarrassing story. Oh, that's uh, great. it's not that embarrassing. Oh well, it's you... embarrassing enough. So I I went and I did my diving lessons. Um, and when it came to do my open water, it was in Lake Ontario, in a very scuzzy part of Lake Ontario. The water had zero visibility. You could not see your hand in front of your face, and I was claustrophobic as you could possibly get. So I could not follow the line down to the spot we were. Once you get past that junk around the uh, the beginning of the, the lake and you get under it all, you can see, but I could not, I could not fight my way through it. Now this was years and years and years ago. I was in my teens, I think, like 19 when I tried to do this. I don't know, I would probably do it again and I would probably get through it just fine now, but man, I'm so disappointed that I couldn't like do my open water. Now I have to do everything over again. But I've been snorkeling a bunch of times on various reefs and it's very enjoyable. But I would love to actually go scuba diving at some point. I still places, have my three quarter wetsuit. There's a ton of places here to get certified. Oh, and, tons. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can do that. It's cold here. Yeah, it is cold here. You get a wetsuit. That's, that's why I have to wear a wetsuit. A child size wetsuit. <laughs> three quarter, but, buddy. Because the full length ones don't go to my wrist because I got some really long arms. Guy's got a wingspan. Yep. All right. Uh, good morning. Love the shows. Wanted to know if the Fluval FX4 would be good for a 75-gallon salt water. Fluval FX4, 75-gallon salt water? You know what? Okay. Uh, you're going to get a lot of mixed answers on this, and I'm going to give you my, my very truthful answer. Um, if I was doing a 75-gallon tank, I would get a tank drilled, and I would put a sump on it because it just makes the most sense. It's uh, the best option really for a multitude of reasons i talk about that i think in the 265 uh, mega build series why i prefer sump so much um but you can do a canister filter and you could do an fx4 um i would probably remove most of the sponges out of it and basically just fill it with biomedia and then you'd be cleaning it monthly um and that's just rinsing out the biomedia so that it doesn't stay clogged up um uh, is that 100 percent necessary not really uh, depending on the amount of live rock you put in the tank, just circulation within the tank can be a enough in a lot of instances. If you're doing a predator tank or something like that, obviously you want more filtration than just that because you're gonna have a lot of mess going on in the tank. But if you're doing a reef, um, you could go with the canister. You could opt to not spend money on the canister and, and really spend money on good live rock and really good power heads for inside of the tank, wave makers to get a lot of uh, positive circulation going on in the tank. And uh, yeah, but... If you want my honest answer, a sump is the best option. It is really the best option. So I would I would invest the money I would have spent on that canister in getting the right tank and a sump. And you will not regret it. You won't. There is no regrets. Regret, regrets there will be. Not have any. I need water. What tank kit would you recommend for a better? Huh? Uh? You could use this five gallon mini bow. Uh, you could also use this, this would be an incredible beta tank. You could use this uh, 15 gallon flex freshwater starter kit. That's also a really good option. I wouldn't go any less than five gallons for a beta with a proper filter. That is kind of my bare minimum. I really don't like going any smaller than that. Uh, optimally though, you could really just uh, optimally for a budget anyways. You could really just use any 10 gallon, standard 10 gallon starter kit that has a power <clears> filter <throat> and a heater. Done. That is fine. No beta is really gonna complain about that. 
Um, get some uh, easy, easy live plants in there. Anubias are really great live plants for betas. Betas like to lie on leaves and relax and lounge. And uh, Anubias leaves are very much the right size and shape and rigidity. You can also do Java fern, um, especially if you're finding that you've got any uh, flow issues. Like if there's too much flow from the filter and your betas seeming a little uncomfortable with that amount of flow, you can use thick, uh, bushy plants like uh, a nice big Java fern in front of the output of the filter to kind of mitigate some of that flow. But yeah, 10 gallons, just a standard 10 gallon starter kit is probably gonna be one of the least expensive and uh, most practical just kits, like all-in-one kits that you can put a bait in. Cool. Uh, what are some great aggressive eating nano fish? Aggressive eating nano fish? <laughs> um, how nano? Like uh, just for small fish that eat very aggressively, uh, I find, um, <laughs> Zebra Danios are phenomenal feeders, phenomenally hardy fish. Uh, I find white clouds are very much the same way. Um, I don't know if you'd consider them true nano fish. I know some people want things that are even smaller, like galaxy rasboards and stuff, but I find them a lot more skittish, um, a lot more difficult to work with than some other uh, species of fish. But yeah, um, another really, really easy, what I would consider a nano fish are uh, Endler's live bears. Endler's guppies are crazy easy. Very, very, very hearty fish. Very, very good appetites on them. Pretty little things to look at. Voila. Uh, what does a betta with a very large belly mean? He's in a five gallon with a guppy and a banjo catfish. My water parameters are normal. Depends. So I've seen big, big dumpy looking betas uh, round in the tummy because they ate a ton. But if that is a permanent thing and they're very, very round and you're seeing any sort of scale lifting on the sides, it could be indication of swelling in that abdominal area of the fish. Usually that's organ swelling that causes that. Um, dropsy is a potential issue in that instance. Uh, it could be a swim bladder type issue, but that usually goes along with very odd swimming. Sometimes they seem like they can't control where they're going. Um, you know, they're, they're basically fighting their belly from rising up underneath them and stuff. It's hard to say. Um, skinny betas, like you don't want a truly skinny beta. You, don't, you also don't want a beta that looks like a fancy goldfish, right? Like a beta has got a relatively, uh, relatively uniform body shape. The only other possibility is that your beta is female and egg laden. They get pretty dumpy when they're egg laden, like really round in the tummy. All right. Uh, question from Greece. Whoa. Uh, platy fish pregnant over 30 days. Will she ever deliver? What? Probably. You know, I would hope so. Yeah. Any time now, potentially. Um, I know we looked this up before. For guppies, I think it was, right? Spicy food. Long <laughs> walks. Um, one thing I like to do whenever I am looking at uh, breeding live bears is feed uh, uh, a decent amount of spirulina. Uh, for whatever reason, I can't remember nutritionally why it's so imperative, but um, spirulina flake seems to really help a lot with uh, live bears that are currently breeding. Uh, it's got a good amount of nutrient for them, um, and it's uh, a good food for them to recover on post-birth. Uh, it's not, I wouldn't call it like a super traumatic event for, for live bears, but um, things can go wrong and stuff too. So just when they do start delivering, try to be around uh, just in case. So you can watch everything unfold. And if anything's going sideways, you might be able to intervene. Sometimes babies get stuck and it causes massive issues. And then you kind of got to make decisions. How can you intervene if a baby gets stuck? What can you realistically do? <sighs> Not a whole lot, honestly. Like usually I'm a big fan of let nature take its course in mm -hmm. those instances. Because if it's happened once, it'll probably just happen again. Um, but you can try removing the baby. It's, it's When that happens, it's actually just a crapshoot. Yeah. <laughs> You're not in a good place. But... Um, yeah, I would, pro I would probably, if I was going to try anything, just try to remove that baby and not expecting it to live. But obviously if there's a block and it's not stopping, yeah, yeah I'm a nature take its course kind of guy personally with that stuff. But, but I'm sure it'll happen. Uh, like you said, it's, it's bound to happen. Yeah. Moment, yeah. Just so. spirulina. Yep. Uh, best way to do a sand bottom for a 55 gallon tank and what type of filtration system would be best? Best way to do a sand bottom. 55 gallon. Hmm. Now, do you mean like the best sand to use for a sand bottom? Or the best 
I'm not entirely sure what you mean. It's open to your interpretation. Let's uh, roll. Yeah, I will just go with uh, my favorite uh, sandy substrate to use, which I've used in many setups, which you guys will probably never stop seeing me using, is Carib Sea Sunset Gold. I just really like the color of it. It's a good grain size. But there's lots of options if you want something that looks like sand but is a little uh, heavier, coarser. I think uh, Tor Torpedo Beach by Carib Sea is another good one. Um, you like black sand, there's like Hawaiian black and stuff like that. But personally, I like just plain, if you're, if you're looking for an inert substrate, just a plain, uh, like nice, um, warm colored sand. I absolutely love Carib Sea's um, Sunset Gold. It's a great sand. Under bright lighting, it looks relatively white anyways. But for planet tanks and stuff, when your lighting's on the warmer side, it is just beautiful. Yeah, okay. that's it. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Fat Rabbit with another super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, I could use some help with my 24-inch Python water change system. Okay. Uh, I can't get enough suction to lift debris. Any DIY hacks? Uh, so do you have low water pressure in your house? Because low wa like the water pressure has everything to do with how well that Python's going to operate. The only other thing that can stop it, if you have really good water pressure, is... If you take the T-pump apart, there's a few pieces that come off uh, where it attaches. Um, sometimes you get a single grain of gravel or a blockage of like live plant debris or something that's just clumped up inside of the pump head and that will cause a massive la uh, lack of flow. But you'd also see a bit of a lack of flow on the return side too. So if you use it to fill up the tank and you know that's going really well. I'm just gonna assume you've gotta have probably not the best water pressure. So the only thing you can really do um, is use the water pressure of the sink to get the python started with sucking and then use an inline pump like uh, the cobalt one perhaps to kind of draw the water. The thing is, you have to be very, very careful not to suck up gravel and sand and stuff. Otherwise you will destroy that inline pump uh, with, with relative ease. <laughs> so yeah, either that or you just, um, don't use it as a gravel vacuum and just drain water with it using uh, an inline pump or uh, a pump that goes into the actual tank. I wish I had a better uh, better answer for you, but the water pressure is usually the, the biggest issue. You have to have half decent water pressure for the yeah. python to do its job. My water pressure here is garbage. So I know like when I finally do get around to setting up an aquarium. Yeah, my water pressure is not bad. So I'm assuming whatever pump they have in my well, which is way far away from the house. I don't know why my water pressure doesn't suck. Uh, it's probably the size of the well. It's just a yeah. pump. <laughs> you shine a light, it's just like yeah. this gargantuan <laughs> pump and the well's like barely containing it. Uh, cool, another beta question. Uh, I have my first beta in a 10 gallon cycled aquarium, but I've had a problem with him chasing after and fighting with his own reflection. What can I do and should I be concerned? Pretty normal. Can't really do a whole lot. Yup. All right. They just do that. If they can see the reflection, they'll do that. Uh, one thing you can try to do is cover the sides and back of the tank where he is able to see his reflection um, with more plants. Obviously, you don't want to cover the entire tank, but he'll either settle down or he'll just keep doing it. Not much you can do. Yeah. Uh, now, this one's pretty vague. Not much we can help with, I, I wouldn't imagine, but I'll ask anyway. Sure. My plants in the aquarium keep dying. I have four piranhas in there. Maybe they're vegetarians. That's about all we can offer. You have to give plants everything they need or they'll die. Yeah. If you want plants that are not likely to uh, die in most situations, Anubius, Java Fern, that's what you want to stick to. Um... But yeah, I don't, I can't, maybe, sure. Yeah, that's yeah, tough. Uh, that's, more context. Uh, when you do ask questions like that, the, the more context you give, the better uh, he'll be prepared to actually uh, yeah. to help you out and give you an answer. So, I don't uh, know. I can't, I'm not psychic. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Brett Judd says salad eating piranhas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Thanks. All right, what is the uh, a super chat from uh, Redneck Barbie 2061? <laughs> Thank you, Redneck Barbie. Awesome from the future. Really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what is the best biomedia bio for angelfish and the best for goldfish? My goldies are 12 inches at the least. The same biomedia is good. <laughs> 
Biomedia is just awesome, period. So the, the thing about Biomedia is you it's just a surface area for bacteria to grow on. So it doesn't matter what fish you're putting in the tank. It's just media. One of my favorites is Eheim Substrat Pro. Um, it's got a very vast surface area. I'm also a big <clears throat> fan of Seachem Matrix and um, Seachem Denitrate. Uh, Matrix is, is the primary one. Denitrate you'd mix in uh, a bit of or in a separate chamber or a separate basket to help uh, hopefully facilitate de uh, denitrification as well to keep nitrates low. But yeah, my go-to has always been Seachem, Seachem Substrat Pro. Matrix is also, there's a lot of good ones, but those are my two favorites. Sweet, Tom's approved. There it is. Uh, hi, dealing with a cloudy white water for over a month. I, per I purchased a UV sterilizer. Won't help. Seemed to have worked for a few days and uh -uh. it cleared it up, but it came back. UV light is active. Yeah, no, it won't, it won't work because you're going through a bacterial bloom. So um, unless if it's a white cloudiness, it's a bacterial bloom, your tank needs to finish cycling. That's the long and short of it. You can add uh, bacterial supplements to help speed that along, like cycle or... Uh, the other one that we've got, um, I'm so brain dead today. <laughs> oh, boo, you're all right. Uh, bio support, Big Al's bio support's a really decent one. I've actually used that for years and years and years. Um, Seachem stability is another good option, but you just need the tank to cycle. UV sterilizer is really the most effective at green water, so waterborne algae. It won't really affect algae stuck to things and um, ho hopefully getting rid of detrimental microbes and parasites and stuff, but you have to make sure it's sized appropriately for that. And usually you have to go a lot higher than what you usually see on the box for that to be effective because contact time and exposure is what kills things. So Now you did a video, three simple steps for crystal clear water. Would that apply in this case you think or not so much? I really don't think so. No, right. you could you could put it out there anyways for anybody else who's facing um, water Cloud, clarity issues. issues. Okay, um, but th that'll work better for things like tannins in the water or particulates in the water. But if you've got a gray white cloudiness, that is ninety nine point nine percent. It's a uh, bacterial bloom. So yeah, you got to feed light. Um, try not to do too many water changes right now. Test the water a lot. Make sure that you are getting nitrate in the water and that there's no nitrite and no ammonia. If you're showing either ammonia or nitrite, it's because your cycle is not finished and your tank's struggling to keep up right now. All right. Uh, in your opinion, what's the best fish for beginners? Or like top three? There's so many. Well, there's um, three. So, so just some super hardy fish. Live bears in general, all of live bears are pretty pretty hardy. Um, I think platies, mollies, guppies are all decent. Swartails are decent. Um, zebra daniels are super decent. Very easy. Zebra daniels all the way. And white clouds. White clouds are also awesome. The nice thing about white clouds too, for uh, people who don't know it, is they can tolerate cooler water. Um, so they're called mountain minnows for a reason. Um, so you can keep them in like 62, 63, 64. They're fine. So if you don't want to have a heater, then white clouds are a great option for you too. Sweet. Uh, if you can have a planted tank, is it possible to have a planted outdoor pond like the large outdoor ponds people build on YouTube? I live in SoCal if that helps. Of course. Yeah. That's like one of the main things. You put water plants in. in um, so you can put marginal plants that live on the water's edge and then you can also put things like lilies and uh, you could put kabamba or ludwigi or whatever the heck you want in there. Yeah, absolutely. A pond is just an outdoor aquarium. Um, the only thing I would warn against is if uh, you have any natural bodies of water that are close by that those plants could ever potentially get into, that you just make all uh, necessary efforts to make sure that those plants don't end up in the natural water bodies. Otherwise, you get invasive species. Cool. Uh, yet another super chat from Fat Rabbit. Fat Rabbit, what is going super on? Super chat machine. Thank yeah. you so much. We really, really appreciate Stealing the it. Show. Yeah, no, we really, really appreciate your support, man. A uh, bit of a cheeky question. Sure. Uh, you don't have to answer, but he will. Probably. Uh, how did you land this sweet gig with Big Owls? What's your origin story? I think we talked a bit about it. Uh, uh, on our last Q&A, actually. Maybe. But we'll, um, we'll go over Cliff's Notes. Yeah, Cliff Notes. I've been working for Big Al's. It was the first real job I got when I was 16 years old. I was at their Mississauga location. I worked in their dry goods department. Um, <laughs> that was that was a lot of fun for me. And uh, I, I basically 
got the bug worse than I ever had it before. Like I always had aquariums growing up because my parents had aquariums uh, and stuff. Um, I had a small hiatus from aquariums. And then uh, the second I started working there, I just started buying tanks and spending every ounce of my paycheck. Yup. <laughs> and uh, after that, I went from the Mississauga location. They opened up a new location in Oakville. I went to that location just for fun and to get things going. I was uh, just a sponge learning everything. And, and I became, uh, I guess, uh, kind of like an asset to the company in that regard. Like I just dove into everything head first and started, you know, having more knowledge than my superiors on the aquarium subject. Becoming and, a wealth of information. Yeah, so then I just kept moving up. I eventually moved to the online because I was quite articulate with explaining things, whether it was in person or over the phone. That's Customer a, service. Believe it or not, that's a skill that it's, it's pretty difficult when you're trying to explain something to somebody and you have to articulate in a way that... Um, without them being able to see any visual indications that they can follow along. So got really good at that, was talking to people in the online. Um, I was a supervisor for the online for a while, then I became a purchaser for the company. Supervisor. Then um, my boss uh, basically said, hey, we wanna start a YouTube channel and you're animated. So do you wanna do it? Cause you got all the knowledge and stuff. And I was like, maybe. And then, uh, they asked me again and then they hired this guy and then I was like, yeah, let's, let's do, let's do this. And if you watch our very first video that we did, which I think was on the <laughs> Emperor 400 power filter. Yeah, I think so. Like yeah, yeah. I've come a long way. Like, yeah, it was, it was, the, yeah, I'm a little bit awkward there. Yeah, a little yeah. bit like, okay, we're in, I'm in front of a camera. There's lights and a guy here. It was, you can tell it was, you know, you weren't sure yeah. what kind of tone you should strike. And we've slowly gotten more slack. Now I'm that. just crazy. <laughs> now there's there's nothing holding me back. I'm so yeah. used to staring at this camera. Because, you know what? I look in the camera and I know I'm talking to you guys. So I see like, it looks just like the dead eye of a shark. But deep within <laughs> that shark's gullet. <laughs> it's all of you guys. Yeah. So it's kind of fun. It's like a portal. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. And I started doing these videos. We hit it off things are going well and now look at where four, we are we're four almost, years in and we're almost at 100k i'm yeah. blown away by this whole thing and i'm really excited and happy to be just sharing the hobby with such a crazy amount of people yeah that's like the best part of the whole thing yeah it's a lot of fun getting to all these cool like builds and all that like yeah. all, all these things that uh uh never thought we'd be able to actually do but here we are yeah uh so yeah that's his, that's his origin story um another super chat from timothy thank you so much uh timothy thank you uh, hello guys, uh, 60 gallon community planted fresh water, uh, use an AC 110 and an Eheim 2215. I'm having surface gunk issues. Would you recommend a standalone skimmer or one that attaches to an intake? Okay. So there's two ways to look at this. If you find one that attaches to an intake, um, you have to make sure it's set correctly. It's not pulling water and all of that junk from the surface ends up in your canister filter, right? So um, or your, your aqua clear. They do make them for aqua clears. And if I was going to put it on one or the other, I would put it on the aqua clear because it's easier to maintain than the canister. It's a lot faster to pull out the junk from that aqua clear, um, and drop it back in than it is to undo the canister and all that black. So, um, yeah, you're basically doing more maintenance on your filters when you set it up as a, uh, intake attachment. If you have the standalone, like the Eheim, it's just that one unit you're gonna pull out, quickly wash the sponge on, slap back together and throw back in. Uh, so I personally, as of late, having used them, I would probably stick with the Eheim just because it's, it's a little faster to work with. And if I don't need it anymore, like the surface is clear, everything's looking good, I'll just take it out and leave it out until I need it again. Uh, rather than having it consistent, unless I truly need it consistent. So, but I like using it as a maintenance tool, and it's a lot faster to clean than it is to, you know, change out everything in my filter. So that's why I like using standalone. But the inline ones can work better if you need it constantly. If you need it all the time, then it probably makes more sense to have it uh, as an intake attachment to either your AquaClear or the canister, depending on which one you'd rather have it. You know, what the <laughs> heck? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh yeah so yeah that's yes okay. all right cool uh another super chat from tim <laughs> bennett thanks for the that's what just blew my mind yeah by the way. thanks for the content You're thank welcome. you thank you so much yeah really really like you have no idea how much uh that really helps us so yeah. we, we do appreciate that um 
Yeah, awesome. Well, you're, you're more than welcome. It's really our pleasure to, to make this stuff and put it. And we love, it's always exciting when we, we film something and especially when we film something and yeah. we, it, like there's a buzz in the air as we're filming. Like we know it's going to be like entertaining or funny Fun, and, and yeah. informative. And I love putting it out and then just watching the numbers grow as you guys watch it and comment. So uh, thank you guys for really supporting us and, and enjoying our content. Yeah, yeah. We, want, we want you guys to have fun. Like yeah. the, one of the biggest things for me is I want to share the hobby, but I want it to be fun because this some of this stuff can be dry and it's just so much fun when you make it fun. Yeah, that's so what we're I'm trying to do, to separate it. ourselves from other channels. It's really yeah. happening. So thank you, guys. We really appreciate all of that. Uh, we have a few more questions left Let's before we call this. it a day. Sure. All right. Uh, are dart frogs beginner herbs? Um, okay, so some people might say no. I'm going to say that I actually mm-hmm. found them as somebody getting into dart frogs from having never really kept frogs at all. Uh, I find them very easy to take care of. Uh, the biggest learning curve you're going to have is just culturing fruit flies, really. Uh, beyond that, it's pretty easy. It's You're not changing water, um, so there isn't too much more uh, to worry about other than setting up a misting system, getting appropriate plants, and uh, just setting up the environment correctly. Uh, the frogs themselves are very, very forgiving and easy to work with as long as you keep them well-fed and stuff. It's all, what is going on? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Holy... <laughs> So, yes, I think they're pretty easy herbs to start. You guys are trying to give me a heart attack. Brett says, Muddy War, fight! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thank you guys so much. It's crazy. Uh, What a day. I'm calling Adam after this. (laughs) Uh, You owe us a pizza! (laughs) Uh, uh. That's too funny. Wow. Guys, guys. you're, you're. Thank you so much. You're crazy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I'm sweating. I'm I know, if, right? Yeah, if I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling, feeling lightheaded. <laughs> Please keep the clothes on, boys. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> one, one more $50 uh, super chat. And we'll, we'll Brian start, will take we'll, his hat we'll, off. We'll start peeling it off. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Hilarious. Uh, That's crazy. They're a lot of fun. I highly recommend Dart Frogs for anybody who's interested in them. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, an episode in the near future, hopefully, on how to set up Dart Frogs. Uh, it's tons of fun. So, yeah. Dart Frogs. Uh, so, Fat Rabbit with his awesome super chat. You guys. Uh, it says, uh, it's really top notch. I'm always happy when I don't sleep through the live event. We're also happy when you don't sleep. Today we're very happy. <laughs> yeah, you didn't what's, sleep what's going on, man? <laughs> wow, you guys are all uh, any. Uh, you guys are crazy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see a couple more uh, questions here <laughs> in the queue. Sure. Uh, can zebrafish live in brackish? I don't think so. I think they're freshwater fish. If you want brackish fish, mollies are amazing. Black mollies specifically, they're great algae eaters too. Very easy to keep brackish. Do that if you have a big tank. Archer fish are awesome. There's lots of different brackish fish, but. I, I don't think zebra daniels are one of them. Okay. I think given the, the crazy, um, crazy contributions, well, can we push this on for another few minutes, do you think? Just yeah. keep going. Oh, yeah, I mean, Laurel. Might Whatever. Be. Uh, Let's keep going, man. Our, our wives and children will understand. Yeah. Um, do coral and things like that of like that affect freshwater aquariums. Yes. I, I have one set up with some corals and so far I haven't had much issue with yeah. them. So w- you won't see the effects unless you do a pH test. So coral is made from calcium carbonate in low pH environments, uh, acidic water. Uh, calcium carbonate will break down and raise the KH and GH of your water. So it'll be adding carbonate hardness to the water. The more carbonate hardness that is in the water, the pH will become buffered until that carbonate uh, material stops disintegrating. So um, wherever the pH needs to be, so for a lot of things, it's uh, at least neutral or t- up to about 7.5 for a coral skeleton to stop dissolving. Um, yeah, your pH is just going to end up swinging up to about 7.5, depending on the amount of calcium carbonate coral skeleton you have in the tank. So it will affect the pH. As long as you put fish in that don't mind being neutral or a little bit higher than neutral, you're fine. But if you're trying to keep like uh, freshwater shrimp and other species that like low pH, having coral ske- skeleton in there works to their detriment. Ha ha! Okay. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I feel like I did a good job and I'm like, uh, ha! Nailed it! Pass Huzzah! Back. Huzzah! What is a good small saltwater starter kit? Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, did that work? Uh, Fluval has a few that are actually pretty good. They have. I'm, oh, it's a freshwater. Yeah, but I'm I'm pretty sure they have a saltwater version as well. Um, Evo, the Evo is a good one. 
Uh, here's the thing. If, if money is not a massive concern and you just want to get something that's really, really good, I highly recommend looking at the Red Sea Nano Tanks. You can either get the Red Sea Max Nano, which basically has everything you need to get started. It's plug and play. You just get sand, rock, fish, and start it up. I've actually used that tank and I loved it. It was a really good system. And Red Sea actually has a brand new light out. Um, I don't know if it's quite hit... Um, all of North America yet, but their new Red Sea Light uh, is it's going to be a really good product. I haven't officially opened one up and turned it on, used it, but I've read all the specs. I understand um, very well how they kind of approach the reefing hobby. It's it speaks volumes in all the products that they've ever released, uh, especially the, their most recent products have been phenomenal. So. Um, if you get the nano kit and it comes with that light or whatever Red Sea kit you get and it comes with that light, you're going to love it. But yeah, I would definitely go that route um, if you have it in your budget to do so. Um, otherwise, the flex tanks are pretty cool. It really depends on how small you want to go. But uh, I'm a big fan of around 20 gallons for a, a nano tank. I don't want going too much smaller than that, especially if you're new to salt water. But Cool. Well, uh, just for uh, your um, edification, I've put out. Uh, I'm going to put out here in the chat the uh, Evo 13.5 saltwater kit feature video series, uh, nice. where uh, Josh, one of our aquatics enthusiasts uh, at the office, he set that up at the office, uh, kind of talked a bit about the process and what's needed, and then uh, throughout the series, he kind of does some upgrades to better suit his needs. Yeah. Um, so uh, you can check that out just so you get a closer look at the Evo and see if maybe that's something that would uh, suit you. But uh, that's in the chat there to, to keep check out in as well. mind with that series. And, and Josh got some flack for this, but you got to understand the whole point of the Evo series was to also punnily play on the word Evo because it means evolution, right? So Josh very specifically changed equipment on it that didn't necessarily need to get changed, but just for the sake of upgrading and showing what you can do, uh, even with like a very basic tank. Um, so and when is, you watch is, the series, keep that in mind. And it is very tongue in cheek called Project Evolution. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So the whole point of that series was to go kind of just ridiculous above and beyond and really like trick that tank out beyond what was necessary just to optimize the living bejesus out of it. Yeah. But it'll still give you a good idea of the actual system and what, what components yes, it comes yes, with and all yes. that. So feel free and to check that out. It's fun to see the things you can do even with a small tank. Yeah. Kind of yeah, crazy. Exactly. Uh, okay, I've had a couple fish die over time, yeah! uh, but for no reason that I understand. Ah, that's not good. I have over 20 fishes in my tank for months now with no issue. A new fish died overnight last week. Any thoughts on why? It's tough you to gotta say. you got to test your water, uh, everything, ammonia, nitrate, ni uh, nitrate ph check check everything oh, oh this is the same guy who talked about putting the coral in his freshwater tank yeah oh check your ph and then compare it to what your fish actually want ph isn't usually like a huge killer of fish but um anytime you're you're living like these fish are living in an environment that is not optimal for them it could put undue stress on their body and they may not have the same uh lifespan that you would expect them to so but i would test your water for everything nitrate ammonia nitrite pH, temperature, check everything and cross-reference it with what those species you're keeping actually require. Because fish will often have a range that they're comfortable in. And the further you creep outside of that range, the closer you get to them uh, having failure to thrive, which can sometimes manifest as a fish dying for no particular reason that you can discern. Uh, I have two clownfish right now. What would be a good active fish to bring into the tank? Um, there are so many options. I don't know how big your tank is. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say. So I'm just going to assume it's not huge and not tiny. Uh, I am a big fan of gobies. Uh, clownfish and gobies don't usually ever have an issue. Um, there's lots of options. If you want really tiny fish, you could go with uh, neon neon gobies, dwarf neon gobies. Shark nose gobies is another name. There are um, some gobies. Another goby I really like uh, are the coral gobies. There's one that is uh, green with red barring. Coral goby, really, really, really cool. Um, huh. There are wrasses you could get into. Six lime wrasses are great. Four lime wrasses are great. Um, pink streak wrasses, possum wrasses. There, I could list a billion fish, <laughs> seriously. But uh, yeah, have a look. 
There's lots of blennies too that you could easily get in there. Starry blennies are great, especially if you want an algae eater, but you need a little bit more space for them. Uh, if you want smaller ones, bicolor blennies, although they can sometimes be rough on some corals. Not usually, but sometimes. Yeah, lots of stuff. Lots of inverts too. Cool. What's next? Next up is I bought a figure eight puffer fish. Wow. Uh, any advice on how to take care of them? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, next. Yeah, cycle the tank first. No, um, figure eights are great. They're they're cool puffers. Uh, just look up their care requirements. I can't give you the, the whole list here. I honestly, it's been a long, it's been a minute since I've kept any freshwater puff, puffers. So uh, I'm not even gonna try to remember what the exact requirements are, but just look them up. Make sure the tank is ideal for them. Uh, set all the parameters correctly. You know, make sure that if you have to adjust the pH of the water, you do. If they're brackish, make sure you add a synthetic marine salt to make it brackish. Get a refractometer to make sure you get it perfect. And then just don't overfeed because overfeeding is probably the leading cause of most tank failures. Um, and it's very easy to overfeed with predator species. And when I say overfeed, I don't mean make them so fat that they explode. I just mean um, put so much food into the system that the system has a hard time uh, dealing with the amount of nutrient and waste that comes from it and you end up with ammonia spikes. So just be very weary of that. Keep up on your water changes and treat it like the, the little aquatic puppy that it is and you'll, you'll have a great time. Sweet. Uh, we'll do a couple more uh, since you guys were super, so, oh, so generous. Uh, we'll, it was nuts. Yeah. Uh, I just ordered Prime uh, and I want a sm any small guide or tips on using it. Do I use it after every water change? Uh, yes. Any other times? You can use Prime. Um, if you ever notice that things are going south in your tank and uh, you've got like ammonia in the water or nitrate in the water, you can add Prime, um, which there are instructions on the bottle for this, I'm pretty sure, just to help alleviate the situation instantaneously while you work on doing those water changes to do everything else. It's kind of like a quick, you dump a cap full in or whatever, depending on the size of the tank, read the bottle, um, dump it in, and then start working on doing the water changes and stuff. It just bides a little bit of time for you by locking those nutrients. Um, Prime's a great product. It's almost exclusively what I use now in terms of water conditioners. The only other one I use periodically is the... Uh, the Big Al's multi-purpose water conditioner because it has a slime coat additive in it. And sometimes I'd like to use that. Um, Seachem Prime does not have that. So it's more optimal for salt water where you're running skimmers and stuff. But yeah, no, it's, it's a great product. It's very easy to use, very straightforward. You need a very small amount of it compared to other water conditioners. So please read the bottle for dosing. Go. <laughs> Uh, why will my pleco not eat veggies? Do plecos usually eat veggies? Depends on the pleco. Some plecos are actually um, omnivorous or carnivorous, like vampire plecos. Uh, some are, I can't remember the word for it, but some of them eat wood. So you need to have driftwood and stuff in the tank because their primary diet is wood. Huh. Yes, and um, there's lots of products for, for plecos that eat primarily wood, but one that I've used in the past, I think we have it. We might not, I don't remember, is... Um, by Rapashi called Morningwood because they have great naming structures. Beautiful move there. Yes. Do you think they like all met and said, what can we call this? That'll like get people's attention. Morningwood. Why not Eveningwood? Wow. Oh. Is it like- It's not as well known. Yeah, that's The term. Um, is it normal for my Java moss to turn brown? How do I fix this? Um, no. It shouldn't really be turning brown. That's so, someone of, said it could be lighting. Yeah, it could be lighting related. Um, <laughs> Java moss is so easy to keep that it, it always strikes me as funny when people are having issues with it. But there's a few things that can do it. Um, lighting is definitely one of them. Uh, a complete and utter lack of nutrients for a prolonged period of time. Like if they have nothing to grow on, they will eventually just turn brown and kind of go. Pfft. But yeah, just flow, light, nutrients. You don't need CO2 or anything necessarily, and they should do pretty well. So, yeah, make sure you've got enough light on the tank, and make sure you're also not burning it with, like, way too much light. I think it's more likely you probably don't have enough, but, yeah. The nice thing about Java moss, too, even after it goes brown, the spores are still alive, like, in the actual mm -hmm. moss structure, because they have, to, like, basically a spore. It can just come back to life. Oh, nice. If it doesn't rot away... You're still good. Yeah. There's hope. Just, it can just come back. Cool. Uh, once the tank, regardless of size, has been cycled, established, how does one keep it from experiencing old tank syndrome? Doing water changes and not getting complacent with maintenance. Old tank syndrome is not a syndrome of having an old tank. It should be called 
uh, complacent aquarist syndrome because what really happens with old tank syndrome is people get um, complacent with doing uh, anything outside of what they've already done or they just push off things that uh, they would normally do because they don't see detrimental results and over a long period of time you start seeing those results so a really good example is a reef aquarist who's got uh, a really nice reef tank has been taking care of it for let's say a couple of years everything looks great so they don't they stop testing their water they stop um, you know doing the water changes as often uh, they don't make any changes even though the corals are growing bigger and bigger and bigger and then things slowly start to uh, appear worse and worse over time and that could simply be because even if you're doing the same <clears throat> maintenance on the same schedule that you've always done if elements inside of the aquarium and bio load inside of the aquarium has changed but you haven't adapted to those changes over time you're going to find that what you're doing is not enough to keep that tank going and uh, excelling right uh, especially with reef tanks or plant tanks, it's basically a constant climb, right? You've got plants that are growing and growing and growing and getting bigger and lusher and nicer and nicer. Eventually, if you don't increase what you're doing to keep up with that, you're going to have a point where it just crashes. And that's really, really what new tank or sorry, old tank syndrome is all about. It's just us getting complacent and being like, well, I know what I'm doing and what I'm doing is working and then just not testing the water anymore so you don't see that climb affecting your let's say with corals your calcium and your alkalinity and your magnesium levels are going further down and further down and further down because the corals are growing and absorbing more at a higher rate so on and so forth so it really should be called complacent aquarist syndrome and as long as you uh you know take care of your tank and don't get complacent and test and you're good Cool. Uh, well, guys, I think that's where we're going to uh, draw the line uh, all out of racetrack, as they say. But thank you so much for this. Yeah, this has been a very fun experience. Uh, Did we get more dollars than likes? Uh, we might have got more dollars than likes. <laughs> uh, you guys go to uh, check out Fat Rabbit, Tim Bennett, Timothy R. Uh, subscribe to their channels. I have, I've just subscribed to them as like a, a thank you. We really appreciate the support you guys, guys give you're, us. You're crazy. You're awesome. Thank you. You're making so much. making us look good for the uh, the higher ups here at Big Al's. You know what I mean? Really yeah. uh, help us out. So thank you so much. We really do appreciate your generosity in that. It's and, incredible. And we're really glad that you enjoy our content uh, enough to to consider doing that something like that. So thank you again so very much to everyone who who not only super chatted us today but all of you who showed up and asked questions anyway and came just even to hang out and yeah, watch from say your hi. canoe or campsite or wherever grandma's, you are. House. grandma's house yeah like we really do appreciate that so thank you guys so much uh, as always for that uh for those of you who do want to continue supporting us in any way uh if you haven't subscribed do that uh check out all the other videos share our channel with other enthusiasts uh, that you know other hobbyists uh get word out there about our channel because uh we want to get to that 100k yes and we're, we're close we, we're so close to that silver play button oh yeah, yeah. it's gonna be so Cool. display it prominently uh so again thank you guys for all of that uh if you do want to support us uh, as well at bigelspets.com or bigelspets.ca if you're in canada uh that's also a big help especially uh if you tell them you came there because of us that would uh, that would help uh but remember july 4th to july 7th uh if you do shop if you're at bigelspets.com between those dates and you place an order uh one one shopper is going to get uh, randomly drawn to win that uh that current USA uh, that light fixture, that light, fixture. light fixture. That's a nice fixture. Yeah, it's going to be good. So um, just so you know, make sure you do that. If you have anything to order over the next few days, might as well do that and get entered to win that. Uh, and I guess that's about it. Uh, you know, you can find us on social as well. Facebook, Instagram, all that. If you're, if you're so inclined, uh, we're always uh, active there as well. And I guess, you know, end of the day, you got to keep on tanking. Got to do it. Yes. Thanks so much, guys. Take it easy. <laughs>